is called Calvary, and that person is called Jesus. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. By faith Noah, being divinely warned of the things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Thank you. This morning as we continue our series on the subject of faith, once again we will turn our attention to Hebrews chapter 11. Somebody has said that Hebrews chapter 11 really is the hall of faith. And when we think about faith, the Bible gives us perhaps one of the best and clearest definitions of what faith really is. In Hebrews chapter 11, it tells us, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Ladies and gentlemen, today we will be introduced to another great man of faith, and that is Noah. Noah's life is used as an illustration of another aspect of the life of faith. It is the ordinary everyday work and witness that this man had for the Lord Jesus, for God, that really illustrates to us that he was a great man of faith. In Abel, we saw how we are to come to God, come before God, and worship Him in spirit and in truth. And in Enoch, we discovered how we walk with the Lord. Now today, we discover in Noah how we are to witness and work for the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, folks, we can't worship God, or work for God, and serve God, and witness for God until we first come and worship. After we have come before God and we have worshiped Him, then we can go outside of the four walls of this church. Then we can go back to where God has placed us in our mission field after we have worshiped and we can work and witness for the Lord. What a joy and a privilege it is for any of us to be able to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me say today, as we have come here, we have done so in an act of faith. None of us has ever seen God, but we come in faith. The Bible says that we come to worship God in spirit and in truth. So we have come to worship and praise Him, and then once worshiping Him, we can go outside of this door and we can worship and praise God once again. For the next few moments, I want us to look at the life of Noah and discover some things that we can apply in our own life because this man had a work and witness for God. First of all, we notice the basis of this man's faith. What was the ground for Noah's faith? Well, the basis for his faith must also be the basis of our faith as well. First of all, the basis of this man's faith was the Word of God. You see, God spoke to Noah, and Noah simply believed God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So this man was a man of the Bible. He was a man of the Word of God. And he based his faith, his work, and his witness based on the Word of God. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 13, it says, God said unto Noah. You see, Noah heard God. He knew that God had spoke to him, and he believed what God said. Folks, our faith today must be based on the Word of God. We must have faith in what God has already said. Did you know that salvation comes because you and I believe in what God's Word says? The Bible says that if we confess our sins, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead, we will be saved. So our faith is based and must be based on the Word of God. We are in His service simply because we believe the Word of God. But there's another basis for this man's faith. Not only based upon the Word of God, but it was also based on the warning of God. Did you notice in verse number 7? It says, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark, for the saving of his household. What does that mean? That means, ladies and gentlemen, it was this man's faith, his belief in the warning of God that moved him to begin preparing and building that ark. His faith rested upon what God said. You see, his faith was based upon, the Bible said, things that had not yet been seen. There had never been a flood. In fact, there had never been a rain. Not only had he not seen a flood, man, he had never seen a mud puddle. It had never done that before. You see, he couldn't look back in history and say, well, God did it for them in the past and He's going to do it for me again. There had never been a time when it had rained like that on the earth. And yet God said to Noah, He was going to do it, and Noah believed God. Ladies and gentlemen, we must have that faith as well. Romans 1, 18 says that one of these days, the judgment and the wrath of God is coming to this earth. The Bible says in Romans 1, 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Ladies and gentlemen, God has warned us that one of these days the judgment of God is coming to this earth. And we need to believe that and prepare for that. And God said that to Noah. God said, I'm going to destroy the earth by water. One day I'm going to send a flood. And based upon what God said, he believed God and began to do something about it. He began to work and build the ark. So the basis of his faith and the basis of our faith must be upon the Word of God and the warning of God. But not only do we see the basis of this man's faith in that it was based on the Word of God and the warning of God, but then secondly, there's the burden of this man's faith. In other words, beginning with this warning, the warning of God, he became a burdened man. We too should be burdened when you and I read the Word of God, when you and I understand that one of these days the Bible has clearly told us that Jesus is coming again and judgment is going to fall upon this earth. Look at what God is going to do. Look at the burden this man's faith had. It says in verse 7, being warned of God, He moved with fear. Now what kind of fear was this that Noah had? Well, it wasn't the same kind of fear that I once had one time. I had a cousin to pass away one time in a horrible accident. And a little while after that accident, his family told my family to go and to stay in their house down at High Rock Lake. And so we went to stay in that house. And Over in the afternoon, right before dark, my mother said, Timmy, let's go gather up some wood and let's build us a fire and let's roast some marshmallows tonight. Well, I thought that was a pretty good idea. I was just a little feller. I didn't know a whole lot. And at that time, we were living in High Point, North Carolina. My mother had never been out of the city very much. And so we were out there in the middle of nowhere at High Rock Lake. And right in the front of that place, there was a steep hill. And so we decided that we would go down that hill and we'd gather up some wood and bring it back up there and that night we'd build us a fire and roast some marshmallows. 
But as we got down there and it was about to get dark, all of a sudden something said, Woo, 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 woo! And my mama said, Son, what was that? And I said, Mama, I believe it's him. He's coming back to get us. And we both took off running up that hill as hard as we could go. And every time I would pass my mama, she'd grab me by the belt loop and snatch me back and say, Son, don't leave me down here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is not the kind of fear that Noah had. You see, the kind of fear that Noah had was a reverent type of fear. It was a respectful kind of fear. It wasn't the kind of fear that he walked around all the time thinking that God's going to zap him, that God's going to send a lightning bolt and get him at any time. No, ladies and gentlemen, it was a reverent kind of fear. It was a kind of fear that respected God. And that fear moved Noah to action and he began to build the ark. Did you know faith without movement, faith without action, faith without works, the Bible says, is dead. Ladies and gentlemen, if we have faith in God, then we have to have a reverence for God and when God says something, we need to get ready. Noah's faith was alive. And it moved him. What did it move him to do? Well, the Bible says, first of all, he was burdened over the safety of his family. He said, if God is going to send a flood, if God is going to judge the earth, if God is going to wipe out most of humankind, then I need to make sure that my family is okay. In verse number 7, it says, By faith, move with fear, He prepared an ark for the saving of his house. You see, ladies and gentlemen, his first concern was his own house. He wanted to make sure that his house would be in the ark. He wanted to make sure that his family, that his people was in the ark. Faith first influences our affections and then it influences our actions. He wanted to know that his family was going to be safe and secure when God sent judgment, when God sent down the judgment. Just recently we had a baptism a few Sunday nights ago. And we were able to baptize one of our youngest grandsons, Levi. And folks, I cannot tell you that over the years what it does to my heart to see and know that our children and our grandchildren are coming to the Lord, that they are going to be safe, that one of these days if they pass or when Jesus comes again, that they absent from the body will be present with the Lord. Folks, I cannot tell you what peace that gives a child of God when we know that our loved ones have gone on to be with the Lord. And this man's faith was first of all affecting his family. And he wanted to make sure that his family was in. I don't know how many times we have prayed with people who have family and loved ones that are lost. My wife's dad has been lost for years and he needs the Lord. And and my wife has tried to talk to him witnessed to him, prayed for him, cried for him. She has done everything she knows to do to try to get him to see in his age how much he desperately needs the Lord. And my wife carries a burden for him every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you one of the things that our faith does, it uh, it turns us towards our family first. And we want to know that our families are safe. That our families are on board. That one of these days when God pours out His judgment or His wrath or they die and slip out into eternity, that one day they will be safe in the arms of Jesus. The Bible says not only was He burdened over the safety of His own that they would be all right and get on the ship, get on the boat, get on the ark. 
But the Bible says he was also burdened over the salvation of others. You see, his faith was not just confined to his own, but others as well. There are people today who have a motto, you would say. My four and no more. As long as we're on the boat, preacher, we don't care about anybody else. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's not what the Bible teaches us. Sure, we're to start at our Jerusalem, but we're to go to all the people groups of the world. We're to have a burden for everyone. Yes, our family first, but also to the masses of the world. And we ought to be willing to go and to tell them about Jesus. This man was con concerned about his family, but he was also concerned about the salvation of those around him. Get this. For 120 years, Noah warned the people of the impending judgment coming upon the earth. Never mind that they didn't believe him. Never mind that they laughed at him. They ridiculed him. Never mind that they didn't care of the message that he was preaching. For 120 years, this man boldly and staunchly proclaimed the Word of God. You know, it would be hard, I've got to say, to go years in preaching the gospel and never seeing with my eyes the result. Now, let me be clear that the Bible says that the Word of God will never return void. We know that the Bible will always find its lodging place. We know that. But I want to tell you sometimes it's good to be able to see the results. Sometimes it's, it's good to see somebody walk the aisle. It's good to see somebody make some decision for Christ. But this man preached for 120 years. And other than his family, there was absolutely no results. They ridiculed him. They laughed at him. They made fun of him. They made jokes of him. They mocked him. And yet undeterred, he preached and proclaimed the word of God. He believed that God was going to send a flood because God said He was sending a flood. I'm sure that sometimes people laugh at us, but it doesn't matter because we believe God. We believe what God said God is going to do. And ladies and gentlemen, like Noah, we are to warn our families that there's coming a day when the Lord's coming back and when the judgment and wrath is going to fall, and we need to warn our friends and people around the world as well. The Bible tells us that one of these days, Jesus is coming again. In fact, the Bible tells us in John chapter 14, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you will be also. The Bible also tells us in Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with Him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we tell you by the word of the Lord. That the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, one of these days, the Bible says that Jesus is coming again. The Bible says that one of these days, the wrath and the judgment of God is going to fall down upon this land. And those that aren't ready, the Bible says, is going to be left behind. 
to experience the wrath and the judgment that's going to fall. The Bible tells us, ladies and gentlemen, that people who do not accept Christ will be separated from God in a place called hell forever. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter if they laugh at us. It doesn't matter if they ridicule us. It doesn't matter if they make jokes at us. It doesn't matter if they won't hear us. We believe the Bible. We believe what God said. And based upon that, we are to proclaim what God said, the Word of God. We see the basis of this man's faith. We see the burden of this man's faith. And finally, we see the blessing of this man's faith. You see, folks, real faith, genuine faith will always bring a blessing. Noah was a threefold blessing. First of all, he was blessed. His family was emancipated. By that I mean his family was delivered from the wrath of God. And according to the Bible, Noah, his wife, and his children were saved. Because Noah believed God, his family also believed God. And the Bible says that they were delivered on the ark from the wrath that fell. I often wondered, had had Noah not believed, had Noah not taken God at his word, then not only would he not have been saved, but his family would not have been saved as well. How important is our faith? Ladies and gentlemen, your faith may be critical in your family's life to them coming to know Christ as Savior. Your faith may be critical at the, at the place where you work. Of the people that you work with, seeing the light of Christ in you, seeing the faith that you have the conviction that you have, the way that you live for God, love God, walk with God may be critical into them one day being saved. It may very well be that your faith will make a critical difference in the lives of those that you go to school with. Because you're letting your faith show. You're letting your light show. And it may very well be that somebody is watching you and because of you, they one of these days will be saved in the arms of Jesus. His family was saved. Secondly, his faith was vindicated. The Bible says in verse 7, by which he condemned the whole world. Ladies and gentlemen, the world mocked at Noah. They laughed at Noah. They didn't believe Noah. But God said it. And Noah believed it. And God vindicated the faith of Noah. You see, the world realized that Noah was right, but it was too late. The door was shut. The water began to fall. The flood began to rise. And before you know it, God brought judgment on the earth. I can imagine what it must have been like. It had never rained before. And Noah was there, he was sharing, he was preaching, he was sharing the gospel. The flood's coming, the flood's coming, the flood's coming. Everybody would come by and they would laugh. Somebody in the community would say, have you heard that preacher down at the ark? He's crazy, he's a lunatic, he's lost his mind. He's saying that God is going to send a flood, man it's never rained. There's never been a shower. There's never been a storm. And people in the community were abuzz, mocking and laughing at Noah. But one day God said to Noah and his family, come into the ark. By the way, how could God say come into the ark unless he was in the ark? Can I just say this morning that when you're in the storm, God will ride the storm out with you? And then the Bible says, once they got on board, that God shut the door. You see, Noah couldn't open the door because God shut the door. 
And I can almost imagine it. They're on the ark. They're safe. And suddenly, pellets and drops of rain begin to fall. And it rains and it rains. And it's rained here a whole lot, hasn't it? By the way, as a side note, can I just say this morning that God has promised not to do that again? But if it does happen, I'm just glad I know where the ark's at in case we need it as a backup. Just kidding. The next time God destroys the earth, it won't be by flood, it'll be by fire. And so the rain began to fall. And it rained and it rained and it rained and the water continued to rise, continued to rise and the people would go to the high spots, to the mountains. And finally, there was no place to run. People began to swim and the ark began to float. And I can imagine after a while listening on the outside of that ark, people were beating and knocking on the outside of that ark. Noah! Noah, we can't hold on much longer. Noah! We can't swim much longer. Noah, can you help us? Please help us, Noah. But nobody could help. You see, they were laughing, mocking, making fun, but it's not funny anymore. And suddenly, there's silence. No one's knocking anymore. Everybody's gone. And the only people that survive is Noah and his family. You see, ladies and gentlemen, Noah didn't fit in his society of his day, but he fit the ark when it started to rain. Friend, you and I may not fit in our society today. They may laugh at us, ridicule, mock us. We may be the the, the point of their jokes. But one of these days, it's not going to be funny. You see, ladies and gentlemen, those that don't believe, one of these days, Jesus is coming again. One of these days, the wrath of God is going to be poured out. And when it is, it'll be too late. People will cry out for God. People will beg God, but it'll be too late. But I want to tell you, for those of you that are standing fast, those of you who are not growing weary, and working for the glory of God and sharing the message and living out your faith on a daily basis through our steadfast faith. Thank God in our days some will come to know Christ as Savior. Not only do we see that this family was delivered, that his faith was vindicated, but there was a future indicated in his life again. Listen at verse 7 and became an heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Noah's faith in God, the Bible says, was counted unto him for righteousness. Noah had faith in the promised seed. Noah looked forward to the day when Jesus Christ would come on an old rugged cross, and he would not only cover his sins, but he would wash his sins away. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing else that can cause God to count someone righteous but faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. What about you? Have you become an heir of righteousness by your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ? If the judgment of God would fall today, if Jesus were to come today, would you be left behind or would you be taken up to glory? Oh, how I hope and pray that absent from the body would mean for you to be present with the Lord. Do you have your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ?